The local evening news is brought to you by Nagico, local agents, Bryson's Insurance. Good evening, it is Monday night. Welcome to the evening news here on ABS. Antigua's News Authority. I am Terry Andrew. And I'm Alejandra Robinson. Thank you so much for joining us. We begin with news this evening that Health Minister, the Honorable Marwin Joseph, says the nation is achieving its goal of a first world healthcare system. He was speaking this morning as the country welcomed the Chinese naval vessel Ark Peace. Shaolin Biza begins all coverage of the ship's inaugural visit to this country. With the hospital ship towering over the Nevis Street Pier in the background, Minister Joseph praised China for its assistance. He announced a boost in the capacity of the Mount St. John's Medical Center to offer top-level eye care. As a result of the generosity of the People's Republic of China, especially the donation of equipment from the Brightness Journey, which cost over a million dollars, it has placed us in a position now in Antigua and Barbuda where we are forecasting by January of 2019 no Antiguan will have any need to leave these shores for any eye care intervention. The health minister further explains the type of surgeries that will be performed. We have just concluded negotiations with some uh, ophthalmologists with specialties such as diabetic retinopathy, where we had to send people to Trinidad. We are, are going to do uh, uh, cataract surgeries, uh, terrisium, uh, the reattachment of the retina. All these will be done right here in Antigua and Barbuda. Minister Joseph adds that the surgery for the most prevalent disease, glaucoma, will be performed here as well. He has this message for residents that they need to take responsibility for their own health. There are over 2,000 who have registered for this service, over 2,000. And we expect coming out of this is an understanding that they need to take seriously the importance of having their annual checkups. We are giving up for that at Mount St. John, where we expect our citizens to adopt the whole concept of wellness. He expressed a profound appreciation to the People's Republic of China for their role in this development and now the Ark Peace. The vessel was launched in 2008 and Antigua and Barbuda is the 40th country it is visiting. It has eight operating theaters, 300 hospital beds, 57 medical doctors and 27 nurses. It will offer specialist medical intervention for over 3,000 Antiguans and Barbudans over the course of its week-long stay in Antigua and Barbuda. Cheryl Inbeza reporting for ABS News. Now the People's Republic of China is being praised for its generous assistance to healthcare in this country. Jamie Jirashe reports on the implications for diplomatic ties between the countries. Arc Peace arrived in this country Monday morning. Almost 3,000 people have registered to receive treatment over the next week. Governor General Sir Rodney Williams, who is also a medical doctor, has praised the People's Republic of China for what he says is much needed assistance. What makes this visit even more special is the fact that it is the second of two complementary medical service opportunities provided for our residents by the Chinese government in less than two months. Hundreds have received free eye surgeries from the recently ended Chinese Brightness Journey program. Foreign Affairs Minister E.P. Chet Green describes the ship's arrival as a humanitarian and friendship encounter. Our friendship is predicated on peace, cooperation, openness, inclusiveness, but above, above all, mutual respect for sovereignty. This year marks 35 years of diplomatic ties between the two countries. Chinese Ambassador Wang Ziemin says over the years, mutual political thrust has deepened, economic cooperation is blossoming, and people-to-people -people exchanges are on the rise. At this juncture, the visit of Arc Peace is really a historic event. It will strengthen the medical cooperation, foster friendship between the two military, and nurture stronger ties among our people. Ambassador Wang says the mission will leave a shining chapter in the country's bilateral relationship. I am Jamie J. Roche reporting for ABS News. 
We also learned here today that China is offering to assist this country in another crucial area. It was announced today that the Antigua and Barbuda Defense Force is to receive support from the People's Liberation Army, PLA, in setting up a robust communication network. This system would allow us, mm -hmm. unlike last year, when we could not make contact with Barbuda, it would allow us to speak to Barbuda during, before, during, and after a storm. It would allow us to speak to our troops on the ground in trade winds wherever they are in the Caribbean. Chief of Descent Staff, uh, Colonel uh, Trevor Thomas, also announced uh, that the hope is to have this system in place before the next hurricane season. Now, he also praised the People's Republic of China for its help, especially Ambassador Wang Jianmin. Now, meanwhile, Prime Minister the Honorable Gaston Brown has responded to critics of China's growing influence in the hemisphere. He says those who are opposed need to talk less and put meaningful diplomatic dollars or development assistance on the table. Garfield Burford joins us with more on the Prime Minister's comments. Garfield, good evening. Good evening to you, Terry. Good evening to you, Alejandro. Good evening to our viewers right across the world. There, there has been quite a bit of talk about China's assistance, not only to Antigua and Barbuda, but, but across the entire hemisphere, because China has been quite dominant and quite uh, perceptive across the, the countries of the Eastern Caribbean, across the wider Caribbean, indeed across the entire Latin America, and even stretching to Africa. So some have questioned China's motives in this regard. Prime Minister Donald Gaston Brown has been commenting on this issue as well. Now he says uh, he's made it clear that economically underprivileged countries in the Caribbean need the kind of impactful developmental assistance to really drive their economies forward. But he says a void has been created because the powerful states of the world have left, have actually neglected the countries, uh, the economically challenged countries of the Caribbean. So he says that's where China has offered significant assistance. That's when he said this last week when he was speaking at a signing ceremony for a hundred million dollars a social housing project funded by a grant from China. I know that there are many in the international community, the political opponents and perhaps frenemies of China who continue to peddle misinformation. Uh, some continue to speak about the issue of dollar diplomacy. When they give money, they call it um, development assistance. When China gives money, they say it's dollar diplomacy. When China lends money, uh, they say it's a form of, uh, of what, uh, debt colonization or a debt trap. As far as I'm concerned, China has been nothing but kind to the people of Antigua and Barbuda. In a statement today, the Prime Minister indicated that he made particular reference to that $100 million grant from China for social housing. By the way, it will benefit residents of Perry Bay, Bubi Alley, uh, Bolands, as well as Barbuda. 250 houses are to be built under that initiative, bankrolled by a grant from China. He made specific reference to that and questioned whether or not anybody could argue that it is not in the interest of Antigua and Barbuda. He said he cannot see how this would be detrimental to Antigua and Barbuda's national interest, given that it's a grant. When they is loan assistance, however, because some persons have raised concern over when China lends money. Uh, Prime Minister Leonard Gaston Brown made reference to that as, as well. He said loan facilities are quite concessionary, 2% coupon rate, five-year moratorium, 20 years to repay. He said that's even better than some of the multilateral, uh, multilateral lending agencies, including the CDB and the World Bank. Now, in relation to why Antigua and Barbuda should align itself closely with China, Prime Minister Leonard Gaston Brown making it clear that countries of the region and countries, developing countries, need to align themselves with countries who respect them and also are in line with their developmental priorities. This is what he had to say last week on that as well. China is making its contribution to the advancement of humanity. And I think that China should be given significant kudos, considering that they are wealthier countries that do not do half as much as China. Their interests almost invariably is self-interest. So if you don't have petrol or you don't have some kind of mineral resource that they can exploit, they show no interest. 
So making clear there, the Prime Minister last week, that China has acted in the interest of developing countries the world over, acted in the interest of humanity, and without calling names, argued that other developed states or, or other states, other more powerful states uh, than China, have not acted with such magnanimity towards the developing world. Now, I put that question earlier today to China's ambassador to Antigua and Barbuda, His Excellency Wang Jianmin. I asked him, what is the motive for China assisting Antigua and Barbuda and other countries across the Caribbean, indeed across Latin America? and across Africa. Is there any ulterior motive? I put that question to Ambassador Wong. This is what he had to say. In Chinese philosophy, every nation, every country, big or small, rich or poor, we are equal. I should thank for Antigua Barbuda, the government and the people, to support China in international affairs, uh, in the one China policy. Yeah. So, I mean, we help, support, always each other. We are equal. We are truly friends. There you go, Ambassador Wang, making it clear that China's motives are pure, that it is doing this because of friendship and very close bilateral relations with Antigua and Barbuda, and indeed across other countries as well. Now, Prime Minister the Honorable Gaston Brown making it clear in his statement today that those who oppose China's deepening influence in the hemisphere should talk less and put meaningful developmental and diplomatic dollars and debt relief on the table instead of talking. He also mentioned that they should uh, take the money out of senseless, idiotic wars and focus some of that money, at least some of it, into helping the developing countries of the world. It's back over to you, Terry and Alejandro. Thank you so much, Garfield. We continue here this evening with news that Prime Minister the Honorable Gaston Brown has praised the Seventh-day Adventist Church for its contribution to national development. PM Brown was delivering remarks as at the weekend as the church marked 130 years in this country. We get our report on this tonight from Jessica Russell. The good book, the good book says that one should rest and certainly worship on the seventh day. So, I imagine that that makes me a habitual sinner, but I believe that one of these days I shall sin no more. Prime Minister Gaston Brown's presence was well received by Adventists and well-wishers who gathered to celebrate the church's 130th anniversary. He said the church has made an indelible mark on Antigua and Barbuda. I believe that of all denominations, that the Seventh-day Adventist church would have made the single largest contribution of any church, of any denomination, towards the socio-economic and spiritual development of this country. And we thank you sincerely. The Prime Minister also noted the church will have a role to play in the battle against climate catastrophes. I ask that you pray for the security of our nation against the natural disasters that strike us from time to time, that consume millions of dollars in damages and recovery and can leave us destitute. The Adventist Church in Antigua has grown to about 11,000 members. Jessica Russell, ABS News. Now, meanwhile, Prime Minister Brown used the opportunity to preach the merits of acceding to the appellate jurisdiction of the CCJ as he addressed Seventh-day Adventists. Here again is Jessica Russell. Our court, the Caribbean People's Court, built by Caribbean people for Caribbean people. I want you all to listen carefully and I hear a little grumbling. This is a serious issue. Prime Minister Gaston Brown tried to win hearts for the CCJ while Adventists celebrated their 130th anniversary. He was evidently unashamed of the message he had to share. But the most salient issue for my government is to make justice available to every single man and woman in this country, every child for that matter, at the apex level. Noting the membership of the church, he mentioned why it was important for him to seize the moment. Your participation in this historic event is paramount. How many you say you have? 11,000? <laughs> that sounds as though that would get us close to the two-thirds. <laughs> Hence, you would understand why I had to raise this issue. On the 6th of November, registered voters will have the chance to vote in favor of acceding to the CCJ or remaining with the London-based Privy Council. Two-thirds of votes in favor of the CCJ will be needed to make the judicial change. Jessica Russell, ABS News. Similarly, this country's leader says the Antigua and Barbuda Labour Party will be encouraging its supporters to vote for the Caribbean Court of Justice in next week's referendum. 
within the next um, few weeks, we're going to ramp up our public education. And even the Labour Party itself, as a significant stakeholder, will be going on the road. We'll be having a few public meetings. He says the party will be going in the communities asking the people to vote on the transition. The Prime Minister says no cogent argument has been made in, on, in opposition to acceding to the appellate jurisdiction of the CCJ. He laments some have been opposing the move to gain attention in support of political ambitions. Shift gears now to this ABL special investigation. We examine the steps by one ministry to create a healthier working environment for its staffers. This evening, we zoom in on the building housing the Ministry of Information, Broadcasting and Telecommunications and Information Technology. ABS's Sharon Miller-Taswell spoke with Portfolio Minister the Honorable Melford Nicholas about the changes. They've been dubbed sick buildings, which over time can create sick building syndrome among employees. After years of failed tests, Minister Nicholas has rectified the situation and employees will return to work full time tomorrow. A 59 page air quality analysis report in 2015, another report in 2016 and 2017 all failed. The problem mold. After every major attempt at remediation, once we took reoccupancy of the building, the mold returned. The first floor of the main headquarters of the ministry, located at Cool Ridge Business Complex, officially deemed a sick building. Now backtrack to June 2014, when Information Minister Melford Nicholas took office. Employees showed signs of illness. Frequent headaches, nausea, respiratory problems, running eyes, itchy eyes, a general state of tiredness. Minister Nicholas quick to get to the root of the problem. It was immediately uh, instructive to me that the low floor in which the staff operated from uh, did not have uh, what I perceived to be an optimal um, environment. It did not smell fresh, um, it was dark, it was muggy, and uh, clearly there were some issues with the building. He investigated and found a previous complaint about the air quality dating back to April 2013. The report had clearly indicated that there was an infestation of mold in the building. Permanent Secretary Joan Joseph started working for the ministry September 2012. After my voice started going, right, and, you know, I was like, why is this, you know, happening? And then after that, he keep hearing person complaining, even visitors will complain about from the time they enter, especially that reception area. It's always smell. This has this pungent, musty, musty smell as if something is wrong. A short time later, she became ill. For the next three and a half years, I have been on a quest uh, to get the building um, restored to a satisfactory level. Environmentalist Ian Weeks from Barbados was solicited to conduct the costly air quality tests. He recommended that I go outside every hour to get some fresh air. The analysis report from 2015 revealed a strong chemical odor on entering the first floor office early one morning and a moldy odor on entering the ground floor reception area, plus signs of fungal growth on the chair, desk and southern wall in the PS's office. Results from 2016 and 2017 echoed the same. Personally, I know it has affected me a lot. It, it, it's just, it was just getting to me. All right. All right. Something I was tired of, really. It had to be sanitized. Sporicides have had to be applied to kill the mold. All furniture that had become infected with mold had to be discarded. Um, so there had to be extensive cleaning. Each time, the mold returned. After all, you start seeing moles start growing. Somebody had a bag, and you see it was full of moles and things like that. After years of failed remediation attempts, employees lost faith. I think what had happened is that people became impatient now about further discomfort that came with the wet carpets and uh, certain other issues. Um, I think this is lost general confidence. As a result, August 2017, the union got involved. It was agreed employees would work half day and have ever since. Buildings do get sick and employees who work in buildings that are sick uh, tend to exhibit or uh, succumb to certain uh, problems that are referred to in this that causes the mold to grow is the malfunctioning or the suboptimal operation of the air conditioning systems. So much of what the report dealt with was 
the functionality of the air conditioning system. Page 5 of the 2015 report solidifies that. Elevated humidity appears to be associated with an improperly sized air conditioning unit. The first floor will not be used by the ministry. However, nearly four years later, employees can now move to the recently renovated executive floor full time. There was no more infestation that was uh, identified for the upper floor. This is just a, uh, uh, an installation of goodwill to indicate that both the landlord and the government and my ministry is committed to providing the employees with a, a safe, healthy environment in which to work. The lesson um, for me now is to not keep this a secret. Mm -hmm. Buildings do get sick. Minister Nicholas says the landlord, Elias Hadid, was vigilant in assisting to correct the mold issue. Some employees will remain at Gate Facility. Tomorrow night at 7, I'll take a closer look at Minister Nicholas's push to have more buildings tested. For ABS News, I'm Sharon Miller Taswell. Also here for us, one expert is alarmed about the level of bullying being encountered by students in primary schools. Certified bullying prevention trainer and consultant Sean Clark pointed to figures showing close to half of the students surveyed in six schools reported being bullied. The schools are participating in an anti-bullying campaign launched by the Halo Foundation. Clark noted that it was most alarming because the survey of the six schools did not cover the entire student body. We did not get to sample 100% to survey 100%. So my thing is that if it was just a sample of the student population and the results came back so high, it, there's need for concern. And uh, I'm glad that Halo Foundation took the opportunity to seek out this program because something needs to be done to firstly reduce incidences of bullying here in Antigua and Barbuda and then to stop new cases from developing. He also stated that while cyberbullying is on the rise, it is not the most popular form of bullying based on the survey. It is still worse than traditional bullying. Traditional bullying meaning not on social media. We still find that verbal bullying is the number one type of bullying, not only here in Antigua, not only in Barbados, but across the world. He wants students to refrain from participating in activities that may make others uncomfortable. What I always try to point out to our, to our young people is that you don't have to be the one creating the message. If there's a message, for example, as I've said to them, you have a situation where some person takes Sean's head and puts it on a donkey's body and put it on the internet, and you go LOL, and then you, you share it with your friends, you are participating in cyberbullying as well. The obvious anti-bullying campaign was launched this past weekend at Government House. Antigua and Barbuda has become only the second country in the Caribbean to officially launch this program. So yes. important for so many students. So, so important. And the figures were alarming. I mean, 43% of students in those six schools said, look, I have been bullied at some point in time. And uh, there was one particular young lady who shared her story on that evening, and it was quite interesting. And she will be the face of the campaign. We'll see more of it as time goes on. All right, good stuff. All right, we take our first commercial break here on this Monday night. For those of you on Facebook Live, don't go fast. Boss is next. 15 national records set in the pool over the weekend. We will tell you about all of them. You're watching the ABS Evening News. We'll be right back.